Hey everyone, I'm Nick and welcome to a new video series on PyTest. So in this series, we're going to be covering the basics of writing and running tests using PyTest, as well as looking at a number of the beginner, intermediate and advanced features that PyTest has to offer. Now, before we get started, we should talk a little bit about why we write tests and why we use test frameworks like PyTest. So number one, why do we write tests? So we do this for a number of reasons. Uh, one good reason is we may be following some methodology like test-driven development. Um, another good reason for writing tests is that we want to protect some sort of main or production branch in our software uh, from bugs um, or breaking changes. So um, you know, what we'll end up doing is we'll write a number of tests and put them into some sort of test suite. Then whenever somebody wants to uh, make a you know, change or a, a pull request to our main or production branch, they'll first have to run um, this test suite with their patch and make sure that all of the tests are still passing, right? Um, and this is incredibly important when we're developing large and complex pieces of software where it can be very difficult to determine, you know, if uh, a patch contains any bugs just from manual inspection through something like code review. Um, okay, so that's some background on why we write tests. Now, why do we use test frameworks and things like PyTest? So we, we, of course, don't need to use test frameworks in order to write tests. We can do everything on our own. But what we're going to find um, in most cases is that we're reinventing the wheel. So you know, if we're doing tests on our own, we're probably going to want features like the ability to parallelize tests or to mark tests or parameterize tests, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And these are all things that a test framework like PyTest can already provide for us. So rather than you know, doing all of this test framework development and writing all this boilerplate code ourselves, we can instead just use a test framework, um, an existing test framework like PyTest, and spend more of our time actually developing the tests. Um, okay, so that's, that's a little bit about why we use test frameworks. Um, and with that background, we can go ahead and get into um, more of the core of PyTest and how we use PyTest. And of course, the first thing that we're going to need to do um, is make sure that we have PyTest on our machine. Uh, so for that, I'm going to mainly defer to the PyTest documentation at docs.pytest.org, which I have up on the right-hand side of my screen, and then I'll have linked down below the video. So you can see here, they have a, a very nice getting started guide with instructions on how to install PyTest using pip. So here we can just run that same command, this pip install u pytest, to get, uh, in my case, PyTest 7.1.2 on this machine. And we can verify it, uh, verify it by just running PyTest dash dash version. And you can see our version is PyTest 7.1.2. And this is the executable that we're going to be using uh, to drive our tests um, for this and later videos. Okay, so now that we have PyTest on our machine, we can dig more into how do we actually write tests and eventually how do we run them? So as the name PyTest implies, uh, we're going to be writing tests in Python. Uh, so our tests are going to be living inside of Python files. Now, very specifically, our, our, our Python files have to have a specific name. So uh, PyTest will only look for tests by default in files, uh, Python files, with the word test in the name. So in this case, we have this test functions.py file. So PyTest will search for tests within this file. If the file was, say, just called functions.py, PyTest would not look for tests in this file. So let's go ahead and open this up. We'll open up test functions.py. And you can see we have four very simple Python functions. Nothing really all that special. So we have a square function that squares a number by multiplying it by itself. The cube function that cubes a number by first calling square and multiplying the result by the number again. And then we have two tests. We have this test square and test cube. And all these functions do is use some hard-coded number, uh, five in this case, call either square or cube and get the result, and then compare it against some sort of reference inside of an assert statement. So this will fail if the numbers don't match. Um, now, now, very similar to how PyTest will only look for tests in Python files um, with a very specific name, um, Python files that have test in the name. Uh, the same is true about the name of our functions here. So PyTest will only consider um, 
these functions as being tests if they have the word test in the name. So in this case, square and cube will not be considered tests, but test square and test cube will be considered tests by PyTest, and these are the functions that PyTest will end up running uh, when we go ahead and call PyTest. Now, um, how, do, how do we know if a test, say, passes or fails? So if, say, our test square function you know, goes all the way to the end of execution um, and doesn't hit any errors and just returns normally, uh, PyTest will consider that test as having passed. If for some reason something fails, so maybe something fails during the call to our function, or this assert fails, PyTest will mark that function um, or that test as failing, right? So that's how kind of pass and fail works in PyTest. Um, okay, so, so now that we have a little background of how our tests look, in reality, they're just Python functions with a specific name, and we go ahead and get into how do we actually run these tests. So let's go ahead and quit out. And to run these tests, we're of course gonna be using this PyTest executable that we just installed. So by default, we can just call PyTest without any arguments. Uh, now, what is this going to do? So by default, PyTest will start from your current working directory and then search recursively um, through all of your subdirectories, you know, starting from your current working directory and try to find all the available tests and we'll try to run all of the tests. So in this case, if we just call PyTest, you know, we're already at the end of this directory. There's only a single file here. It will just collect the tests from this file. So you can see here in the logs, it collected two items, and then it went ahead and it went ahead and ran both of those tests. So each of these green dots corresponding to one of the tests that it ran. At the very end, it prints out the summary of, you know, two of our tests passed in zero seconds. So just execution time rounded down. We wrote some pretty simple tests here. Um, we can also specify a path to a directory for PyTest to start at. So we can do PyTest and, you know, say just, you know, dot slash for the current directory. And PyTest will, again, collect tests starting from the directory provided and go ahead and run them. And then we can go as far as specifying a specific file that we want to collect tests from. So by specifying all the way to a particular file, PyTest will only look for the tests that exist inside of that file. So again, we get you know, the same result, just our two tests inside of test functions.py. Um, okay, so the basics of running our tests, um, but in many cases, we actually want to see what tests we have available to us instead of just you know, going ahead and running all of them. And for that, we can just append um, the argument collect only to the end of our PyTest command. So for example, we can do pytest test functions.py dash dash collect dash only. And you can see here, um, it still collects the two items, then it prints out the hierarchy of the tests it is able to find. So, you know, inside of the module test functions.py, it found these two test functions. So this function test square and this function test cube but it doesn't actually execute these functions. It's just stopping after collection and then printing out this hierarchy. Now, uh, just like we could select, you know, a directory to start at or a specific file to look for tests in, we can also specify, say, the individual functions or tests that we want to run. So I can do something like pytest test functions.py and then use dash dash colon or, or colon colon test square to just run test square from this file testfunctions.py. So if I go ahead and run this, you can see PyTest now is only collecting a single item, just this test square test, and it runs that test and it of course passes. Likewise, we could do the same thing with test cube and just run test cube. Um, okay, so that's a bit about selecting tests, uh, another method we have for selecting tests is through substring matching through the dash K option. And you can get more information about the substring matching by just running say pytest dash dash help. Um, but the very basics of it is we can do pytest, you know, in, in everything as normal. So select say a directory to start at or a file to search for tests in. And then I can say, I just want to run the tests that match 
a particular substring. So for example, I could do dash k cube, and what it will do is it will collect all the tests, and then it will deselect all the ones where it can't match the substring cube with the test. So in this case, you can see that it collected our two tests from test functions. One of those tests got deselected. That's going to be our test square because it wasn't able to match this substring cube inside of that test name. And then one of our tests was selected, and that'll be our test cube test. Likewise, we could swap this out with square, and we get a very similar result, but kind of flipped. So now we're only selecting test square, and we're deselecting test cube. And then, of course, if I do something more general, say I just put um, you know, a substring as test, which will match inside of both of our tests, you can see we get both of the tests collected, and both of them end up running. So nothing gets deselected in this case. Okay, so that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. Some very basics on how we write tests in PyTest and how we end up running them and selecting individual or subsets of tests to run. We'll be digging a lot more into the other features and things like test classes in later videos. Uh, but that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. As always, you can find all of these examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. So if we go ahead and go under repositories, you can see all of this stuff is uploaded to this PyTest repository. Um, additionally, there's another repository called PyTest Guide, which includes a number of written, uh, written guides related to PyTest. So for example, um, here's, a, here's a guide that's a PyTest introduction that includes a number of the topics that we talked about today. Uh, but that's going to go ahead and do it for today. Um, as always, I'm Nick, and I hope you had a nice day.